Good, how are you? She's okay. Yeah. She's all right. She's Where's Darcy? Let me want to see the whites of her eyes. So, <laughs> I like to take Mark yeah. Darcy. I like to take pictures. I want to get one across here. I'm going to grab my water real quick. Okay, yeah, I don't want to work, but not guilty. And then, yeah. I mean, they have video of <laughs> yeah. us. you're going to be looking there and we're uh, we're just gonna yeah you're good there Am I close? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good. All right, folks. Um, we are going to get rolling here. Um, you are here for shift week two of 12. I still feel intimidated saying that. Um, apparently, Darcy didn't scare everyone away too badly last week. Welcome, Diana. Welcome, Austin. Glad to have you guys. Um, and today, uh, Dominic and I are going to be diving in uh, to all things money. Money. Um, fun topic. Who likes talking about money? Hey, how about this? Who'd like to have money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start. Uh, anyone feel like spooked or like, eh, uh, money makes me nervous, money makes me anxious? I, triggers, me. triggers you? Okay. That's why he's not in California anymore. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are going to do our very best again to keep this to, um, an hour. I feel daunted by that. Uh, I was talking with a coach of mine who did this series and he's like, oh, we did it in 90 minutes. I'm like that makes more sense. Um, but we're going to try to try to keep it moving. Um, just a quick kind of flyby. Let me move this out of the way so it's not distracting me. Um, where we're going and we're not going to try to cover as much uh, slideshow ground as I felt like I needed to last time. Um, so we're going to let Dominic star. Uh, we're going to talk about why does this conversation matter? Why, why talk about money in a shifting market? Um, we want you to understand your situation. Like this isn't just about he and I talking about money, but we want each person to leave clear on what it means for you and your life and your business. Um, that's going to be personal. That's going to be business related. And then he's going to share some practical tips with us. Sound good? Dominic. Um, actually, before, before, before we intro you, I'll intro this topic a little bit. Um, this is a brief little phrase stolen from uh, Shift book, the book. Um, and he makes a brief statement, revenueing your way out of a shift is iffy at best. Can someone take a stab at what they think that means in this context? Mm -hmm. Brennan? It's going to be hard to actually pull yourself out of that and like succeed through it. Okay. Stuart, you're going to jump in on that? Yeah. Uh, focusing purely on the bottom line is not necessarily the way to go because if you're chasing that paycheck, then that can distract you from better serving your clients or, you know, really focusing on what the market is doing in order to create some long term growth. Yeah. So, <laughs> revenueing, basically, he's saying, oh, oh, if I just earn more money, like, oh, like, no, earning more money covers a multitude of wrongs, right? Um, but the truth is things don't become less expensive when you start doing less business. So by the time you start doing that, it's too late. And I'll, I'll read the quote. Um, Revenueing your way out of a shift is iffy at best. Generating more income may be impossible in the short run and take too much time in the long run. This approach is always just a little too late. Now is the required speed when a shift occurs. Get your expenses lower now. So um, Today is going to be not about earning more money. Fundamentally, it's about getting the financial house in order. Um, 
and we'll talk later about earning more and more money. Dominic. Okay, so thank you for taking your time out of your day. Uh, I have to check out at five till one, so please remind me when it's that time. So I'm going to set I, a timer just so we're, yeah, we're all good. Timer. So are there people something more important than this? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, you're going to trust me. You're going to get your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Every penny. So real quick, um, just real. Like I kind of have to understand what I'm working with here because there's so much your head would explode. I'm trying not to explode it in like two minutes. So I'd rather tailor it to where you're at, not where I am. And, and I can cover like an overview at the end. Um, so instead of gathering uh, a study in the roots, I want you to gather the fruit quickly. So we have limited time together and we can always take this, you know, later. I'd be more than happy to talk to everybody. Um, so first of all, may I ask uh, from a show of hands, Who's been in business less than seven years? Okay. Darcy? No, just kidding. Um, so who, whoever's on the um, Zoom or whatever we have, mm -hmm. can you ask them to just quickly give me a, a, how many years, like seven or less years I need to know because I want to make sure I'm tailoring this to make it. Those better. on the Zoom, uh, we got less than one year, three years. Uh, Laura saying I'm less than three, less than seven years. Chanel, three years. Anthony, six years. Cindy, four years. Okay. Fair enough. So me and Darcy are the old farms. Jillian, four. Madison, two. Laura, two. Yeah. Okay. So, so hello, everybody. My name's Dominic. Melissa's at eight. So you got eight. Melissa's with right. you at eight Super. there. Okay. Super. Okay. Uh, so there's two people in class that have been here longer and probably have a little bit more pain and that's suffering. trippy <laughs> <laughs> we're in the matrix right now <laughs> so, okay so 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 speaking about the matrix how many people have seen the matrix not many oh yeah oh, okay yeah. the reason why i'm asking is does anybody remember that scene where morpheus says to neo do you really want to know do you really want to know so there's red pill blue pill take the red pill you guys can go back to whatever the heck you think whatever the perception is not the reality our society based on social media and many other things operate on perception not reality mm -hmm. so our job as agents are to articulate what the reality is darcy understands this because she was talking about it a little bit last week so this is kind of hard on me to deal with this so i want you to strap in I know there's no seatbelts, but believe me, we're going to spank it out. So I have a little bit of time to, to rock your world. So just like I said, just have an open mind. Put your phones on airplane mode unless you're on the phone. I forgot my notebook. Keep going. And um, here's where we're going to start. So a lot of people, do you guys know who I am and you know how long I've been around? <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> Dirt. Heard, yeah. yeah. So, so um a lot of people don't know my story. They just pretty much know that, okay, he seems like he's doing okay. And I'd like to be doing okay, right? Um, so the reason why I asked for this board, because I want to show you just a little example of something. So each and every one of us have a situation. That means our tapes, our baggage, our good things, bad things, miseries, things that we had no control over. So that shades how we operate, how we process, how we think about money how we think about our job, how we feel like we're successful, not successful. I could never do that or I can do that. Do you understand? You know what I'm talking about. So everybody has something. And, you know, like, so I look at my family, you know, so my life was a little more tricky, you know, how I dealt with things. So I'm gonna just show you something here real quick. So you won't be able to know what this is because this is my little invention. <laughs> okay. So each and every one of us have a life. And, and all we know is what we know until we know more. So like whatever our baggage is, whatever our tapes are, whatever our school experience is, bullying, whatever it was in your life, you know, your parents were poor, they passed away, they were divorced. There's all kinds of stories of what make us who each and every one of us is today. And why I want to start here is because I'm going to tell you a quick story about what happened to me. So, so all of us are in our comfort zone. Oh, you got them. Crummy one, throw it on the floor, don't make someone else use it. So, so here's our comfort zone. And so this is our cycle of life of what we know based on our upbringing and all the things that touched us. Can you all identify with what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're to the point here today where we're gonna talk about finances and we're gonna talk about, is this market shifting? And, and do we have to study more or do we start gathering fruit? 
So based on personalities and based on baggage and based on our life, we're going to do it however we see necessary. Now, you're smart enough to say, you know what, we're here today for a reason. Is there a little nugget, a little drop of information that I can use to help me understand how to say something better, process something better? Attitude. So they always say, you know, uh, mind, spirit, body. When you hear that a lot of times, why is that important? If I feel physically sick, it's hard to fight the fight that we have to fight every day because think about it. You're only as good as your last transaction in this business. And we're all have our own sphere of business. We're all trying to find our own space. We're all trying to put our own shingle out. And so besides that whole nother conversation, it starts right here. Because like right now, if I tell you my story, so my mom, I didn't have a bicycle when I was young. And my mom, we had five children. My mom wanted me to have a bicycle. And a lot of you wouldn't know this, but there's a place called Goldie's. It was a Schwinn shop in Canton. And um, so my dad found a bike at a garage sale and we were supposed to share it amongst, you know, can you imagine like, okay, it's my turn. Oh, it's your turn. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So my mom was a stay home mom. Obviously I'm, I'm an old guy. I've been doing this. This is my 35th year. Wow. So I had six adjustments. Minimum. <clears throat> so you guys know seven years or less. So it's whatever you see right now. So, so for me, I was in the work program, so I didn't really have college bound ideas. I grew up poor, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, all the naughty, naughty stuff that we deal with. And, and I knew I didn't want to continue down this path. I didn't want to be stuck at Walmart. I didn't want to be stuck doing a job that I didn't feel good about, you know, because if you're passionate, it's easier to believe in it. It's easier to persuade and convince what are the benefits of what it is we do. And unfortunately, if you do the right thing and you're authentic, the money always comes. I don't know why it does. It just does. And when you're panicked about money and buying shoes and paying bills and paying college and buying braces and paying health care, whatever it is, you know, it, it stresses you out, right? Because like, yeah, money kind of matters. Without any money, we're kind of screwed. Okay. So my mom used to take in shirts and, and charge 10 cents a shirt to iron. And then we went to Schwinn's, to the bike shop found the used bike, put it in layaway. And this was in the summer. And every week we'd go back and put a little couple bucks down. He'd, they'd let me ride it around the block. Now, what do you think I did the whole time? All summer long. I didn't have the bike, but I rode it once a week or every other week. And I pined and I pined. You know why? Because I couldn't have it. Well, by the time we got it paid for, it was $47.50. By the time it was paid for, it was winter. So, of course, I didn't care because I slept and dreamt about this thing night and day. This is when I was nine years old. And so when I finally got it home, you know, I wrote it in the basement. We had a small house, so it wasn't really a very big basement. But I turned it upside down. I cleaned it. I polished it. I just loved that bike. And I had it for like a year before it got stolen. So, so but the point is, is that that's when I think of what was my paradigm shift or what clicked in my brain. It was the pining, the yearning for something that I really, really wanted. Now, of course, I'm nine years old, so you can only process a nine-year-old. So then with that mindset and seeing my mom work so hard to try to help me get something, that affected my brain. That affects how I operate today. It affects everything. And the story is much deeper. But the point is, just so you get the basics, because I got to get on with the rest, is so eventually, you know, I was in high school. And so they said, you know, it looks like he's not really a smart cookie, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed. So he's more than likely probably going to drop out of school. So let's get him in the OWE program, Opportunity Work Experience. Anybody know about it? Mm -hmm. So I was in the Opportunity Work Experience because they knew I had to work part day, go to school part day, so that I wouldn't turn into one of these people that never made it out of school. And I had no intentions of going to college because I had uh, test phobia. I probably wasn't a good reader, writer, or arithmeticer. So that's just me. So I wasn't like superstar man, but I did work in the retail grocery business, which I found that I enjoyed working with people in general. And so I was just thinking, okay, I can make maybe minimum wage, but that's as good as it gets. You can fight for a nickel dime raise. So this is kind of like where I was. And so by the time I got to my early twenties, you know, I knew in my heart that people that are wealthy have real estate in their portfolio. I just knew it. Although I didn't know what I know because I was right here. So now I'm thinking, okay, how do I change something? Because I'm not going to college. I'm just like, how can I figure out what I can figure out? Well, I grew up in a poor end of town. No one knew who I was. You know, my atmosphere is $25,000 price range. So that's all I knew, right? So I said, okay, I'm going to go to school and get my real estate license because 
that's how I'm going to be able to get at real estate, even though I didn't understand how it worked. Because remember, this is in the 80s, 87, 88. Do you know what the technology was like back then? The, the newest technology was we were thinking about getting a fax machine, whatever that is. <laughs> okay. There was no Windows, no DOS, no classes like this, no YouTube, no Google, nothing. And so it was just like cassette tapes because I wasn't a reader. So I had to find cassette tapes to help inspire and educate me on how to do what I wanted to do because to do this every single day without any understanding, it's like getting slapped down, slapped down. And I could tell you more stories about that another time. <laughs> so anyhow, so I get to the point where I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to try this. Now I'm starting to squirm because that means I got to go to school, take a big old test, which I flunked in 1987. And then I passed it February 11th of 1988. Okay. So at the time I was in retail gift, retail grocery, and I couldn't make more than say six fifty an hour. So I made like 14 to 15,000 a year. Well, at this time, when I was in the OWE program, they want to see a savings account. They said, like, you know, we want to see, like, you're doing something with your money since you're working half a day. So I had to always bring my savings account in, and I had $3,000 saved when I was in high school. And they said, they went around the room with everybody in the class, what are you saving your money for? And I said, I'm saving it for a house. They about fell off their chair, the teacher, because she says, like, everybody else, like, stereo, car, you know, things like that. But in my mind, I knew real estate is in my future. Now, I didn't know it back then what I was going to be doing, but I knew it had to be there. But the thing is, is when you are in a small circle of life that I only knew, how was I ever going to buy real estate? How was I ever going to see the high life? So I needed a vehicle. So I thought, okay, real estate. Now, I didn't know what I was getting into. And so I got into real estate. I finally passed the test. And now I'm all licensed, ready to go, right? You guys know what I mean? Okay, so how's it working for you? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's hard because, you know, you got to build credibility. You got to understand what you're doing. And so why this is important is the vehicle that you have, which is the job you do, you have to kind of like dial in quickly. You have to know, understand dialogues. You have to understand what, the, what people are going through. So you've been through a lot. So you know what I'm talking about. So what I ended up doing is, is I passed the test and I'm all ready to go. And I had a big run in with my boss. And I told him, go screw himself. And I went to the office because I had a broker. It was like a, someone you wouldn't even know. Uh, but this was a long time ago. And I came to the office at 8.30 in the morning, excited to start my new career. And of course, at 8.30 in the morning, were there any agents in the office? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> there were three secretaries drinking coffee, BSing. And they said, hey, what are you doing here, Dom? You're going to be late for your job because they didn't know the news. I said, I got great news. I quit my job. I'm going to be a full-time realtor. And what do you think they said? Bad idea. Yeah, you what? You idiot. So what did I want to do after that? I went in my cubicle, had no clue. Matter of fact, I wore white socks. I didn't even have a sport coat at the time. And this is, remember, in the 80s. This isn't now like when you can be casual. Um, so I just sat there and trembled and thought, you know, I'm going to just throw up. So I want you to understand, like, what I'm telling you, I experienced. And I know. No one can BS me and say, you know what? You don't understand. Oh, bullshit. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and it's safe space. <laughs> so anyhow, so the broker comes in and says, oh, I heard the good news. You know, um, you're going to be a real estate agent. You're going to be so good. And da, 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 trying to pump me up. Now, inside, how did I feel, you think, based on knowing my past? Not yeah. very good. Yeah. Like, I made a huge mistake. Because when I left the office, it isn't like I got a review or I got a, a letter of recommendations. I told him, screw himself, because he's an ass. <laughs> and so when I left, I was very angry. So we respond to pain or pleasure. So what makes you change out of that comfort zone, because you only know what you know until you know more, is pain. Yep. Fear. What is a motivator? Fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear of loss. Well, when I left, do you think, like by this time, I already had a home. I was in my 20s. I started at 28 years old. I bought a home when I was 21 years old. Because remember, I was saving money in school. I bought a home at 18% when I thought it was a good rate because it was up to 23. This is 1981. So I thought that was a good rate. It's all relative, isn't it? Guys? Right. 6%, are you kidding me? I would have killed all day long for 8% let alone 6%, 5%, 3%. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all relative. It's like looking west for the sunrise instead of the sunset.
You just got to know what you're doing. All right. So now the broker says, what have you been doing while you've been here? And I says, well, I'm just thinking about what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. Now, should I do an open house? Should I talk to a successful agent? So I was basically studying the roots. I wasn't gathering any fruit yet. And how do we get paid by fruit? And I didn't have a budget. I didn't understand anything. Matter of fact, I didn't even have a car. I had a pickup truck. And at that time, I thought, well, I got to get a four-door car because what if I have to take someone around? And at this time, since I already quit my job and went to try to find a four-door, I find out that I didn't have an income yet. So therefore I didn't qualify to buy peanuts. So they, we had to finagle to do a lease. It was just a horrible story. So what I'm saying to you guys is with what's available today, this is like rocket fuel. So bring us up to speed, Dominic. You've, uh, we could detail every year. You, 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 you build, you grow, you build, you grow. And then, and then 06, 07 hits. Correct. And you said you've been through six adjustments. But you mentioned that that was the one that was the most yeah. like, oh, here we go. So, so a lot of you may remember. So there was uh, the Gulf War, 9-1-1, 2007 is when the market started tanking, July of 2007. 2008 was the stock market. So in our old time business from 7 to 13, it was pure hell. 50% of everybody dropped out overnight. So that's when you want to talk about Before that moment. So let's, let's say, you know, spring of 07. Uh, maybe you see it coming. Maybe you don't. I, I saw it coming. Tell us. So before you saw it coming, what did your life and business look like as we were related to okay. finances? And so, then so, and then what had to change once you so, caught so, so what had to change was um, I had to triple down, double down because I had five children. My wife was a stay home mom. I had no health care, no retirement. So Power of broke, right? like, And on top of it, since I understood real estate's an important old part, I, I had five mortgages as well. So five children, five mortgages, not to mention they all had braces, but the point is- and, and, Mortgages on the braces. Yeah, and then my one son, the last one, we didn't even have insurance when we had him. So I had to finagle with the hospital to get that figured out. So I, I'm just saying like, it wasn't a very pleasant time. And so I would be at work uh, and then- How I much was, were you selling at that point? 40, like what did, 45 transactions. Okay, okay. 45 transactions a year. Which the was amazing before Dobbin. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was kind of topped off at 45, but what was my sale price? I wasn't in like country club sale price. I was in like, you know, 130, 120, whatever I could swing, I was in. And so 12 of those 45 were short sales. What's short about a short sale if anybody knows? Okay. Yeah. Right. right. So that about killed me. Not to mention I worked for basically nothing. But at this time, you know, I had five little kids, teenagers. I mean, I needed shoes. I needed bills. I mean, healthcare. I was I was under the gun like no tomorrow. And when the economy tanked like that, my tenants, they but you had rentals, and you had money coming in, right? No, I did, but it was like, could I pay part of it here, part of it there? Well, but my mortgages do the first of the month. So I had five mortgages, you know, plus my home. And so I'm like juggler boy, you know, and then something, someone moves out, you're, you're painting. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be there five today. Got paint all over my phone. I mean, it just was a disaster, but at the end of the day, this is what happened. So I had to make a decision. I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to get real creative. I'm going to understand short sales. I'm going to understand foreclosures because that was 35% of all transactions. Darcy talked about it last week. She was eating peanut butter and jelly out of her trunk because when the market tanked, well, knows because her parents were in it so she sat in her blood and and i lived it and and i could and i almost want to cry when i think about how much pain and suffering i went through so at the time which made it so much harder was we had these little kids my wife was cooked i mean she's at home all burned out needs more help and i'd get home from work and i would be i would have no ass left after that day of work i'd come home totally wiped out so physically i was there but mentally i was out and she didn't really understand what I was going through. I didn't understand what she's going through. So we kind of went through, you know, a tough 10 year period. It was seven years, but 10 years probably before we could figure out who's on first, mm -hmm. but here's what happened. So since we doubled down and I was working harder, you know, everybody and their brother got into real estate for a while and then they quickly dropped out. So then when people were really scared about their finances, because real estate isn't always, oh, we're building a new home because we're so excited. It's like, I'm getting a divorce. I got cancer. I lost my job. You know, it's all kinds of things. Five Ds, right? Yeah, it's, it's horrible. So, so most of my business is because of how do you solve someone's problem? 
and and at the time, you know, what what you know, it was like a buyer's it was a buyer's market back then, which means you know, there was no copper pipes, you can't really get financing, you gotta be real creative and all this kind of thing. Well, now it's like, well, you know what? We're offering 10,000 dollars we still don't get it. I'm just so discouraged with my agent, I'm so discouraged with the process. But the reality is, is that you know it's still kind of like that. And, and, and the shift is happening in the market, but it's not as bad as you think. It's just, you don't know because you don't have a comparison. So partly the important reason to have a profit loss statement, or even as something as simple as like writing it down on a piece of paper. Now, a lot of times people say, well, you know, I got it in my head. Yeah, I'm good on the numbers and blah, blah, blah. But when trauma sets in, believe me, your head goes blank. Before, before we dive into some of the practical stuff, Dominic. Yeah. So um, real estate, I think you could argue is a big hat, no cattle sort of industry where we talk about what you do volume wise. And, and Gary will say, I don't care what you did vol vol uh, volume, volume wise. What's your, what's your profit? Are you, are you actually making think, money in your business? What's so profit? Like, how about this? Can I just pay my bills to right, start with? Right, right. And there's know? a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of people who, Hey, look what this person did. But there's, there's a lot of broke big producers out there or, or big producers who make this because it's a, it's a big hat, no cattle industry. Talk with me about your perspective um, <laughs> as it relates to what you could do uh, financially versus what you should do when you're in a big hat, no cattle up and down sort so, of industry. What's so, your perspective on so that? So here's the perspective. Did anybody ever read The Millionaire Next Door? Yeah. Okay, kind of an important book, even though you may not see the relevancy in the way you process, but you could be like, I don't know, like my son, I remember when he was young, you know, the electrician or uh, someone would come by the house when they're their Beamer or their Hummer and just have the jewelry and have every toy that you could imagine. And he's like, I want to do that because why? Perception, the guy is wealthy. Well, guess what? He's probably more broke than we are, mm -hmm. right? Because he makes, say, $1,000, he spends $9.99. So he's really a poor person, but perceptually he isn't that. That's kind of the, the best basic essence of, you know, wants and needs. So like when you have to shift in our business, cause like the joke always was, you're only as good as your last sale. The reason why is because like, you know, I, I say it's like thermostat control for me. So before I had like a bookkeeper and people doing stuff for me, that's hard to relate when you can barely pay your damn bills. So profit's a good thing, but if you can't pay your bills, it's pretty frustrating and it creates high anxiety. And so you want to get control of your current status. So I always say the baseline. So this is why I asked how many years in the business. So I would start with the baseline. The baseline would be is you write down, like you don't need Quicken or QuickBooks or anything like that right now, but if you have it, great. If you have an accountant, great. But usually when you're first starting out, you just don't have the money for advertising and all these crazy things that people tell you you need to do, that's bull. It's a relationship business and you need customers. So you either reduce your cost or raise your income. Well, the problem is like what I said in the shift book is sometimes there's a little spell where you can't raise your income. So what do you have to do? You better get dialed in. I'll give you an example. So, so like for me, which, which I'm totally out of debt now after the story I told you, but let me tell you, man, it was painful. It was a painful run. And I was lucky because I was disciplined and this is how it starts is you start with the mothership. The mothership is your home, your apartment, your family. You start with where you are, okay? And the thing with our businesses is you're only as good as your last sale. And why I say that is, is because I could have a blockbuster year. Think about it, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So if I was looking at the last two years, I'm depressed because now my business is way down, but is it really? Mm -hmm. So compared to the last two years, yeah, it is. But when I look at 17, 18, and 19, I'm almost on track for my normal business. So now, zoom in on mothership real quick. That's 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 food, that's transportation, it's gas, that's your it's, it's, it's shelter. Your basic, basic. It's, it's, if, if everything went to crap, we're still okay. Right, we're still right. so so what you need to do is the first thing I would do is figure out your current status. And so let's face it. You know, like I work hard, I deserve a car. I work hard, I deserve a motorcycle. I work hard, I need a sea do. I work hard, I only need, but these are depreciating assets, not appreciating assets. But it's, I want it. No, you want it eventually, but focus on what the mission is. The mission is, is stabilizing the mothership. When I say the mothership, that's like your house payment, your apartment, 
your utilities, groceries, insurance, gasoline, braces, whatever the basics are, student loan, whatever the bases are. Oh, I got cable because I like sports. So my cable bill is 200 a month. I got a landline just for a backup. You know, I got my cell phone. So, so you say, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. So like what I have to do is take a serious scalpel and take a look at my mothership. Is there anything in the mothership I can pair away and won't destroy me? Okay, so fine. I can stream. I can go to YouTube. I can Google. I can listen to satellite. You know, so you got to decide what is critical to help you. Now, the other thing is as a 1099, you know, you want to write off every little thing you can talk to your accountant. But the point is, is that anything and everything you do, meals, get anything you do, you want to make sure, is it a business expense? Can you use it as a business, business expense? Because that's super important to pay attention to that. Now, in the beginning, yes, I had a box, a shoe box, put all my receipts in, end of the year, I'm all depressed because now I'm resetting my cap, restarting over, and then I'm laying all my my things out in the dining room table and I'm all depressed and it's a slow time of year and it's like do over Groundhog Day, do over Groundhog Day. Well, it's not like that anymore right? because I figured it out. But at the baseline, once you get control of the mothership, you pair everything you can pair. Then you say, okay, how much do I need to make just to keep this baby alive? That's your baseline. Now, profit is different. The baseline is you need to have your shit together. Now, let's say this, like I'm kind of left footed, you know, I kind of quit my job on Friday, started real estate on money. And guess what? I'm not very prepared. <laughs> and so three grand in the bank. And I didn't know what about to bar embark on. It was ugly. So the point is, is that fear kicked in. And what does fear make you do? The uncomfortable. Yep. Talk to a stranger, knock on a door, take rejection. Did I like it? No. Did it make me better? Yes. And so what happens is if you can pair your mothership expenses to a minimum, then it takes a little pressure off over here, right? Can I jump now, in real quick? How many people like gun to your head know your monthly mother mothership expenses? Half-ish. How many would like to cut them back a little? Yeah. Well, and I think that's 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 a takeaway because the, the mothership is, that's the baseline. It's Without not, that, you're screwed. It's not the, oh, the trip we like to do or the cable I like to do. It's, you know, if if everything breaks, you know, breaks down, I still got this. That's it. Um, homework for today is not just look at one month's worth of, you know, the last month, look at the last three months because you might've had a particularly expensive month or particularly inexpensive month. Average that out. And then look at your pipeline. So, okay, what what do I expect in the in the next sixty days in GCI coming in, or or true income coming in to be able to 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 get into reality? Oh, you know, I think I'm living on five thousand dollars a month, but in reality, it's nine thousand. Uh, time to time to zoom in. So, if you're not there, get there um, because this conversation is irrelevant. So, and with, if you're not aware, so so real quick. So you get the mothership. That's step one. Okay. Step two is you get it under control, and then you say, okay, what is my vehicle? So so ideally, when you're first starting out, you don't have a lot of cash. You know, I say, okay, how do I create passive revenue? What are other streams of revenue? Because you know what would be ideal for me is to be in a position where if I didn't work today or I broke my ankle and I'm locked up and I can't do anything. That's the problem with our business. Oh, let's go skiing for the weekend. Oh, I can't because I hurt myself. You know, I'm out of business. You don't understand. Oh, come on. Live on the edge a little bit. I'm like, I got five kids to support. You know, so you kind of like are held back. Let's jump out of the airplane. I don't think so. You know, so, you know, there's things you want to do, but then you have to be practical about it. You know, now sometimes you're lucky and your spouse has insurance, your spouse has a job. So this is like fun money. Well, that's great too. I never had that option. <laughs> but but what I did know is, is I knew how hard it was. I kind of told you a little bit of my story. So real estate was an important piece because like, what do I do for everybody all day long is help them build wealth and help them do whatever. So why don't we do it a little bit ourselves? Well, but I don't have the money. So you have to get up to speed on that. So this takes time. There's not anything getting rich about our business. You always look at the long view. So in your portfolio, after the mothership's under control, then you got to set up what's called an emergency account. The emergency account is a minimum of a thousand dollars right away. Are you it's, talking uh, personal life and business? No, just I'm starting. I'm life? starting with the mothership because okay. if the mothership's not stable, your life is a disaster. Right. So personal the whole work is a disaster. personal emergency fund. How but, much? How much needs to be in there? So, so to start with, when you don't have a lot of cash. 
you try to get a thousand in so that if something happens, you get a flat tire, something bad happens, you don't have to put on a charge unless you're paying it off at the end of the month. So you want to kind of be real focused on don't live off of credit cards, although we've done that. Rob Peter to PayPal, we've all done it. Okay. But by stabilizing the mothership, then you know the very minimum so that your wife or partner, somebody's not going through the deep end, right? Okay, so now we go a step further. So you say, okay, now this is hard because every year we redo it over. It's been several years. Now the market's shifting a little bit and we're not really sure what that looks like because the last seven years, it's just been a gradual uptick, right? The market isn't that bad, honestly. Yeah. It's just you double down a little bit. You focus on your relationships because what you have control over is your income. Believe it or not, they say that it may be off a little bit. It's only because of your attitude. Because like when you, whatever you think about, if you're talking about, oh, the economy is so bad, inflation is so bad, then you feel all down and out. It's like, oh, God, I'm not going to have any, you know, who wants to work with a Debbie Downer, right? So, so even though you're hurting, you fake it till you make it. You just have to. Like if you have to put a, a song on that rocks your world to get you kind of- What's your song? Funk, Look at you. Play that funky music. <laughs> Lay down the music. And play. That's a joke, but anyhow. I just see him strutting up to a listing appointment. So, so. But the point is, is there's a trigger. We all have them. It could be deep breathing exercises, a song, listening to birds, walking in the woods, whatever it is for you. You have to figure it out. Pet your dog. I don't care. But my point is, is that you're going to make money in any economy. You, you have to, and, and I'm living proof of it. And I had no skills, no extra anything other than I just knew real estate is something in my cards. And so over time, you know, you get a handle on your mothership, then you start saying, hey, what is my dream? So when I got in the business, I made 15,000 a year in my job. And so my wish was, because I knew someone that made $100,000, a six figure income. This is in the eighties. And I looked at that and I was like, oh my God, that's like a God. Because like, I couldn't even comprehend it. I mean, 15,000, my dad, I think made 30 at the most, you know, he's a truck driver. So I was like, wow, if I could only make a six figure income, <laughs> that's happened before in a month. Mm -hmm. So the point, what I'm saying is, is that like, you have to open your mind up for more than just scarcity right? So, so whatever it is for you, whatever you feel passionate about, this job that you're in is the sky is the limit. I know it. I experienced it for like the last 10 years. Okay. So while I was doing that, my load was heavier because we had five kids. I had five mortgages, no insurance or healthcare. So like I always heard, okay, real estate sounds good for me. That's what I'm in. So I should probably understand that which I did. So over time, I bought a property, finagled it, handled it, wasn't really making big money. But what happens magically is that potentially is passive income. If it's not only a tax write-off and there's so many other benefits, talk to Darcy about it, she has plenty. Um, did I throw that out there? <laughs> Body, mind, and spirit. So your attitude is everything. So if you're spending major time with people with crappy attitudes, kind of cut them back. Go around people that will inspire you. And if you don't have anybody, there's tapes, there's audio books, there's all kinds of things. So, so there aren't tapes really anymore, guys. It's okay. <laughs> so, 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 so what happens is that it, your mind kind of gets going, you know, you think about it. So the three things you always have to remember is you think about it. So what we're talking about now is giving you some ideas and you know, that's a good idea, or it's making me think about something. You'd go in a corner and you get your notepad and you start scratching down ideas. You pare it down, pare it down to whatever clicks with you. And, and like, since you only know what you know until you know more, what the beauty about all this is, is like, so here I am in this, technically this was me. And now this is me. Now I never knew that this existed out here. All of this exists for you and you're trapped right here. You're trapped right here. You know why? Because of our upbringings, because of the, the terrible things that happen, the good things, the bad things. So while you focus on this, what you want to do is, is you got a, a vehicle. The real estate engine is the vehicle. The, that, the income generating vehicle. That's your income. So that's, you got your mothership under control. You know what you have to do to at least get that stable. Then you start building an emergency account. So you get a thousand right away. 
And then you say, let's say it's 4,000 a month for your mothership. So you would want 4,000 in your emergency fund. So if something happens to you, you, got, you don't have to put it on credit cards. But the ideal scenario is to get it up to a year. But how can I comprehend a year when I can barely get a thousand in an account? Mm -hmm. So you baby step it. So then we're going to go to the next thing. So everybody's a 1099. And so now we're trying to get our mojo going and we're starting to do better. And we're starting to get a hold of this and we're learning more things. So you eventually buy a piece of real estate, let's say, or, you know, maybe you find something else that brings in some revenue. So some people will say, well, you know, maybe you should start a 401k or put some money in an IRA or buy gold or silver or pay down your debt. Don't have a bunch of credit card debt. Don't go leasing. Don't go, you know, like there's things, you know, like that depreciate that as you're thinking through your successes, as you become more successful, what gives me the peace because I have so much pressure financially is low debt or no debt. Well, we don't always have that option. You got student debt, you know, maybe you had to, you know, get a loan on a car. So there's certain things we have to deal with, but you don't have to go buy a Beamer. You could buy like a nice, you know, normal car. Cause when you show up in the Beamer, even though your ego feels good, the guy's like, oh God, they make too much money. Little do they know, you don't even know how you're gonna make your house payment or your car payment this month. So, so the point is, is that you get the emergency fund. So it's like my thermostat. So for me, for where my level is today is different than where it was 20 years ago. You know, so for today, let's say I'm totally out of debt and I have some rental income now. So that's my passive income. And then I've been putting some money aside for a 401k. And then eventually maybe I'll get social security. So I'm thinking, okay, between those three things, I should be able to have a good fourth quarter if I get to that point, right? Mm -hmm. But you guys are young. So you focus now on building that reputation, building that relationship, because even though we're all independent small businesses under the umbrella of another business, we're building that reputation. We're building that fortune. But again, without adding other revenues coming in, and it takes time to build that. It doesn't happen overnight. Hell, I've been doing this 35 years. I started when I was 28 years old. I'll be 63 in December. So like I bought my first property when I was 33 years old. And then another one, maybe a few 20, you know, within like 15 years. And then, so I have like a four unit, a two unit and a house plus my home. And so now that's the asset. That was a tax shelter. And so as a 1099, you got to pay social security. You got to pay your expenses. And you got to pay the mothership, but then are we just going to work, make a lot of money, spend a lot of money? You got to have a plan. And the plan is how to create passive income. Darcy, you know what I'm talking about. You have a large family and it's scary. So now you say, okay, I kind of have that down. I got some money in my emergency account. I kind of have my notes here. So I know what my costs are. I did my home front and now I'm going to do my business. Like, okay, do I need to do some advertising? Do I need to buy a new computer? Do I need to hire a part-time person? So, so like you're basically creating this entity under the entity, right? Can you, the, let's, ahead. let's zoom in on that. Um, a lot of people, oh, I get, I get paid and I, you know, now I have, now I have the money to live off of and, and it goes okay. straight into my personal account. How do you have it set okay. up as you think about okay. marketing? I've got these fixed expenses. I got taxes. Like what's your, right. what's your method? Okay. So, so what happens is, is when you get a check, so, so I'm at a different level now. So like I got a LLC, I got uh, an S corp, you know, I got a 401k, I got employees, I got some agents on my team. So mine is like a little more intense. You know how I do, I got a CPA, I got a bookkeeper. So, so you're not there yet, let's say, but you're a 1099. So what happens is at 1099, you know, you get a check from the company once you sell your commission, because that's how it works. Then you put it into auto direct deposit or you get a check, how are you doing it? And it goes into this account. And let's say you have four closings and you're like, oh, we're like rich for a minute. <laughs> well, what you forget about is, is that really 20% of that needs to be in a tax account. And then, so you have it come into one account. Yeah. So how I, here's how I do it. So I got, so I got three, three credit cards, one's for personal, one's for my real estate business and one's for my rental accounts. Okay. Right. And I have some rental accounts now. So a lot of times when you buy a property, if anybody owns a property and you're married, for example, it'd be in husband and wife or a partnership, right? So like, like what I did is I removed the partnership part of it on the rentals and made them LLCs. And then if, if I die, it's a TOD transfer on death to the trust. So I have a trust. So that's kind of like higher level thinking, 
which I could talk to you about another time. But for the very baseline is you got this money coming into your general account. You got to have sub accounts, a tax account. Maybe if you have children, a little bit goes to college, a little bit goes to like, you could have a credit union, right? And you could have A, B, and C. So you got your main account and then sub accounts. You could do that at a bank or open a couple of different accounts. So how I do it is, is I have like a general account, right? And then I got a money market. So I, I, I pull, so I try to get a baseline. So what is my baseline? So let's say I would like to keep 30 to 50,000 in my account, my business account, because I have payroll and I have other things. 50 is kind of like my comfortable zone. I prefer a hundred, but hey, you, know, you can't have what you want all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So what is your baseline? Now, once it goes below that, I start feeling anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then I like, oh shit, I got 50 over here, 20 over there, 30 over there. So I know, oh, I got $200,000, I'm good. You know, but at first I'm saying I only got 30. So I'm starting to panic. So you want these sub accounts because as that money piles into the main account, every quarter, even if you don't do it to start with, you do it at the end of the year, you pay your taxes after you do your, your adding and subtracting. But as you get going, you want to set up a quarterly where you pay your quarterly taxes. And then you settle off at the end of the year and you're always estimating what you think your income is going to be because the worst thing in the world is they say, oh, look, I made $100,000. I'm doing great. Then they say, you owe $25,000 in taxes. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Like we just bought a car. Yeah. You know, I just bought my kids braces. So you have to think like that's the bigger way to think. Do about you, it. do you pay yourself, you know, but remember, a now, salary from, I do, your, from your business? But, but remember now that's the next level. Okay. So, so where they're at, they're not at that level yet. Mm -hmm. Let's say maybe Darcy might be, I don't know what you're, and you might be, do you have a corporation have S corp? Idea. Okay. So, so who has the S corp or LLC or something like that? Okay, Not you sure. do too? How about you, the rest of you? 1099? So everybody has a company. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump right in then. Okay, so so here's what it is. You know, um, since we're allowed to do it this way now, so mine's Font Enterprises, Inc. It's an S-Corp. So every dollar pours into the S-Corp. And then what I have is subcategories. So money market, 401k, because I have employees, so I do a 401k. And the reason why you do that is because you have a larger limit. You can put up to 40,000 40, a year aside into your 401k. Whereas if you have like a IRA or something, it's like six grand or something like that. But we may not have the money to do it because, you know, so, so with the social security and your taxes and all these things you have to pay, the corporation then, you can be an employee of the corporation. Who does that? So that means that, and this is how I do it too. So let's say I make, let's just make this up. Let's say I make, uh, the company brings in 100,000 and I draw a salary of 25,000. So every month it's 25 divided by 12 and that's my salary. But there's still some additional money there that they say is corporate money. So the corporate money is taxed differently like with social security and stuff than say you're 45. So if you didn't have a corporation, you made 100,000, then you, know, you pay more taxes more social security and all that. Now keep in mind, I'm not an accountant. I'm just giving you the broad strokes of it. So, so now let's just say to make it a little more complicated is you start now building your assets. So now you have children or you have people that you love. They're like, like if you stop working, what happens? You know, like back here in the back, I forgot your name again, Stephanie. So Stephanie, something happens, you fall, break your leg. Or... Stephanie's got property. She's all right. So that's how she started is in the rental world, flip world and all that. So she might be the exception to the rule compared to like everybody else that's say seven years or less. How many people own rental properties? Darcy? Mm -hmm. I didn't see her. She, she subtly did. She, that's what I like She's about her. She's so subtle. <laughs> She's probably the richest one of all of us. Guaranteed. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, everybody check her out, Google her. Hey, so, so what happens is, is that, you know, there's a liability, of course, if you have a rental, even if you're innocent, because you've got, of course, a realtor with deep pockets, you know, aren't all realtors rich, you know, so what happens is, is that, you know, so you got the income coming in from the vehicle, which is our real estate business, right? But to make it really work for you, because what frustrated me forever is I'm doing really well, but my load was so heavy that I just was getting frustrated. I felt like Groundhog Day. Work really hard, go like crazy on the rat wheel, make a bunch of money, wow, pass, get awards, get plaques, ah, and then start all over again, and then do it again. And I'm not seeing any fruits of my labor. I'm like, the older you get, the less energy, like, can I do this again? This is year 35, think about it. 
are you 35? But that's fine. <laughs> so, so when you go through this process, you're like, damn. So you got to make it work for you. You got to make your money work for you. So there's ups and there's downs. Money's easier. Money's harder. So you want to remember you make each dollar work for you. So if you get a hundred bucks in, where's it going? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you still got to pay your taxes. Now, if you go higher level, like some of these people are, you do an LLC or you do an S corporation, you got rental properties, you know, you could bucket them into an LLC. Like if you have a nicer property, let's say it's like 500,000, maybe it's in its own LLC, like one, two, three, fourth street LLC. And then if someone gets sued there, that's the only thing they can grab hold of. Plus you have your umbrella policy and other things, but that's how you build your passive income. You know, it helps cover you with your taxes and things like that legally. And then once it's paid for, now you got the asset. By the way, you can borrow from the asset tax-free, <laughs> which, you know, like, so let's say you do a cash out refi and you need $50,000, you redo a couple of your properties, pull a little bit out, tenants pay it back, it's tax-free. So there's so many things creatively you can do. But for me, what I found from talking to a trust person is, you know, I got now to the point where I'm obviously 63. So I'm starting to think about like my exit strategy in 10 years. Like when I decide I want to wind her down or do something else, train, I don't know what I'm going to do, right? So, but for right now, I want to protect this hard earned asset because I worked really hard to get here. But then I'm worried about my wife. What if something happens? You know, she's not going to be able to manage this crap and all these properties and do all this stuff. So I kind of worked it out where I made each one of them an LLC, took her name off, put it in a TOD, my name only as a president or member of the property, each property. So now what happens is, is let's say, I depreciated, I used all these benefits, and now I decide, you know what, I'm going to start selling them off so I can, you know, have some retirement money. Well, guess what happens? You pay all your recapture back, you get abused on taxes. Well, one of the ways to kind of work around it based on what the trust people told me is you put in an LLC, TOD in your name, as long as your marriage is strong, and if you die, it drops into the trust, then they can keep it, generate it, sell it, and not pay the taxes like I would be paying if I did it without living in it for a period of time. As you know, two of the last five years, you live in it. You're just going to move then, around to all of your right. rentals. So you, you can know. do that. But so my point is, is that that's kind of the bigger <laughs> thinking of things. So when you think like that, and then you say, okay, but during all this risky part, not now, but when you still owe on everything, it's probably a wise idea to have a life policy, like maybe even a term policy, because like if something happens, I mean, your kids, your house, you you know, like, so let's say my wife, she didn't really, uh, she just kind of dealt with the home front. I dealt with all the rest. So if something happened, they could panic and just sell everything and just, just basically cause all kinds of trouble. So I'm trying to say, okay, how do I position my family, my legacy to be protected? Mm -hmm. And so definitely, you know, if the mothership is X and I'm totally out of debt, well, this over here, this sidebar thing, could it fund that? And maybe even a little more? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it worth a million dollars? Yes. So now you see, if you can discipline yourself, now you can do this where you actually make this benefit instead of working a lot, spending a lot, start over, work a lot, spend a lot, start over, pay a bunch of taxes, work a lot, start a lot, start <laughs> over, pay a bunch of taxes. Then it's a thankless job. If you don't figure out streams of revenue over time, it could be gold, silver, debt reduction because like if you're paying x amount of debt and that goes away guess what you're not paying the debt you could have gold silver you could have cash at home you could have streams of income you could have rental properties you could have a laundromat you could be you know whatever like however this is i don't know how you guys do it but that's that's your 1253 that was the buffer okay so so real quick so just in in closing of what i want you to understand and i'm open to talk to anybody call me we'll get coffee so, so the baseline is mothership. So for the people that don't have LLCs and S-Corps, that's like, especially if you're newer and trying to figure this out, um, you got to have that under control first. So, you know, and, 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 and then like, let's say you go like, well, okay, well, I don't know how much I have to make. So let's say your average commission is $2,000, you know, and remember now, if you make 2000, it's not all yours. So if you keep it in one account, it tricks you into thinking, man, I'm rich. And then all of a sudden you're poor and you're panicked. And so you're operating, you're not responding, you're reacting. So in our business, the reason why systems and consistency and understanding is so important is because you basically are responding and not like, oh my God, 
Oh, they called, they're all upset about, ah, you know, someone didn't get through this, ah, you know, and you're like, ah, 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 you know, so you're just, and you, and like what Darcy said last week is, you know, so now you got a frog. I don't want to deal with the frog. I'm going to make copies. I'm going to tidy up my desk. I'm going to study the roots. I'm going to do this and go broke. 87% of the people fail in our business for a reason. They don't have a plan. And if you don't have a plan and you can't expect things to change if you don't change yourself and you control yourself, you can't control me, but you surely can control yourself and your atmosphere. So that would be the baseline. And then the next one is, is okay, what's your strategy going forward? As you build this beautiful thing, you need to get something out of it. But if you're like an impulsive person, you better do the pluses and minuses before you make that decision mm -hmm. so that you know logically it makes sense, not emotionally, because that's what we do with our customers so they don't get buyer's remorse. And then the ROI is return on investment. So that's kind of like the higher level stuff that some of you are already dialed into. That would be passive income. You know, how do we do that? Well, you know, several years ago, not several years ago, 15 years ago, you could have 25,000 in a money market that you could quickly take out and earn 5% interest. Those days are gone. Mm -hmm. If you get 1%, are you kidding? Like to get 1%, you would to, to get like, you need like, I don't know, 4 million in the bank to earn like nothing. Mm -hmm. Like 30, what it would, would be 1%, like 4,500, 45,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Is that 1%? Yeah. Whoever's smart 000. with math. Yeah. Yep. But can you imagine? So mm -hmm. remember, you used to hear the days where if you had 1,000 in the bank earning interest, you could live off the interest. You can't do that anymore. So you have to, like, we have it perfect. You know, you could figure out the passive ways to do it. So ROI is that, the LLC, the S corporation, now the profit and losses. So, you know, I did the shoebox for years. Well, guess what? I got QuickBooks, which I don't know how to use. Like, it's, my, it's like me being a painter. I can paint, but I'm only making 15, 16 an hour where I could maybe earn 100 an hour doing my job. So you always want to say, what's your H fund? What's your highest and best use of time? And you always want to do DPA, dollar producing activities, because it's easy to get caught up in studying the roots. You know, I don't know. Should I do an open house? Maybe I should do some mailings. Maybe I should knock on a door. Maybe I should go to the mall. Maybe I should pray, talk to my colleges. I don't know what to do. But the point is, is that do something. So that's, do you guys have any quick questions before I wrap? I've got a couple concluding Go thoughts, but I know you got to jump over to your I gotta thing. Jump I got a couple minutes. Question for... So the, the homework coming out of today, um, we can, this was fantastic from a framework standpoint and what to put in place and um, the home front is, has to be managed first, oh, yeah. but your homework today, even if it's just an exercise, because we're, we're running a business, we're not just going commission to commission, is uh, even if it's just an exercise, reduce your expenses by 20%. Um, how do you do that? Uh, I don't know, is anybody familiar with the Kronk uh, acronym? As you're going through your credit card statement, this is personal and this is on your business side as well. Uh, Kronk stands for keep. So, okay, I got I to gotta pay my person what I pay them. I'm not gonna cut them. I got to pay my mortgage. I got to pay the rent, whatever the thing is. What, what can I not change? I keep, what can I reduce? Oh, I've got a full-timer that I could have as a part-timer. I've got a part-timer that I could have as a virtual assistant. What can I, what can I manage down? What can I optimize? Wait, I've got two services that actually, I've got two, I'm using two CRMs that do the same thing and I'm paying for both. What am I even thinking here? Um, negotiate. Um, hey, my, my, uh, my internet is 110 bucks a month and I wonder if I call them and say that I'm going with a different provider, Absolutely. they might be willing to have a conversation with me. I believe in you. Let me send you over this department. Why don't you send me there to begin with? Yes. And then finally is cut. What are the things where it's like, hey, I've been spending money on that marketing at that golf course and I've never <laughs> met a single person from that golf course. It's got to go. And back to the ROI comment, our investments in our business have to be evaluated from an ROI standpoint. Am I paying a, a person too much? Am I paying a service too much? Am I investing in leads and I'm not getting back a reasonable return? You should be getting at least three times what you're investing, if not more. And than I don't that. buy leads. Never have. Um, never have. And so being more accountable and dialed into your business in that way with Kronk, keep, reduce, optimize, negotiate, and cut. And I'd love for each of you, um, I'll ask for a show of hands next week, who was able to identify 20% of their world's budget that they could cut if you needed to. We're not saying you have to do it, um, but if you're living at the threshold and your threshold dips a little bit, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself in a, in a 
undesirable situation. So that's one, one practical thing. Anything else for Dominic before he gets on his call? Well, just a little side note. I, I'm not sure who's on Zoom exactly, so there might be someone there. I appreciate the fact that Dom was here last week as an observer today. Real deal. Really into it. If you didn't read it, please read it. It'll help help you understand like how really wealthy people do it. Not like fourth generation that had didn't have to work as hard for it. And it's just a sad thing. And this helped me understand. Um, not that we don't want to reward ourselves, but it's just and you do find little ways to reward yourself because it is very hard work. But it's also very rewarding when you help people like build wealth. We're helping people build wealth. And as long as you understand what they're worried about based on perception, you be that voice of reason with the reality of what's truly going on. And it's not as bad as they think, even though the headlines, they don't clarify, they terrify. So you have to remember, you're the Good. peaceful voice in their life. One other quick little practical note. If you're on the Zoom, you can scroll to the top of the chat. If you're not on the Zoom, I'll email it out to everybody. Thank Thanks, you, Dominic. Everybody. Let's give Dominic a hand. <laughs> Dominic, the large conference room on the other side of this wall is reserved for you. Um, is uh, a PL. If you've never kept a profit and loss statement, now is the time to start doing that. Even if you have very minimal expenses, uh, get it started. Um, I shared the millionaire real estate agent chart of accounts, which is going to be more detailed than a lot of people need. But if you're looking to actually grow a bona fide business or run a bona fide business, um, it helps kind of paint a picture for the level of complexity that you'll want to one day have. Starting with a spreadsheet of, hey, this is the money that came in and this is the money that came out is all you need to do. But a PL is it tracks your money movement in time, whereas a balance sheet tracks where your money is uh, in, a, in a freeze frame sort of way. Glad to talk more about that. I'm not an accountant um, or tax professional, but I like this stuff. Any other thoughts or questions before we split? Next week is Zoom only. Um, I'm going to be in Lexington outside of Mansfield and Stephanie Webb and I are going to talk about leverage in your business, um, which is putting in something and getting more out of it um, uh, through systems, people, technology, et cetera. So it should be a good, good conversation. Thanks for joining on Zoom. Antonio, did you have something you want to? I was just going to say something I wrote down from last week with our studio trip. I just thought that she, made, she made the comment when Dave was talking about uh, where to spend money was you had said vanity versus profit. Yeah. And I was like, that's not good news, okay? I'm huge on that. Yeah. Stuff. And I'm black for a word or whatever. One of my one of my favorite books on this topic is psychology of money if you haven't read it pick it up and it's your net worth equals your income minus your ego over time uh -huh. um which is which is yeah, totally true like you know he yeah he's super successful and he drives like he drives a, a nice car with yeah super yeah like it's a nice car but it's not too nice car nobody mm -hmm. wants you to show up in a super nice car nobody mm -hmm. wants you to have judgment they want you to look like you're successful, but not too successful. Yeah. You don't have a choice of cars to buy now. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I know, like, my dad will be like, you have to drive an American car because some people will be a You know, my my great. all made here now. Yeah, like all these funny little things that, like, you know, try to be everybody to every, you know, but mm -hmm. makes yeah. them feel comfortable mm -hmm. and, uh, and get over yourself. And this, is, and this is a community that values that. If you if you if you present yourself too much of this, they're going to go, "Who is who is this guy? Who does he think he is?" Yeah. Not Brendan. Brendan. Brendan just brings the heat. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Thanks, guys. Stop recording. <laughs>